Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Wild Ride with Steve-O. Not only is Whitney Cummings just an incredible talent and a huge star, this episode is special because I really went into it feeling like I needed to open up to get personal. You know, and more importantly, I wanted to really, really be mindful about trying to do a better job. So I think this is a very personal episode. Plus, our very own young cunt tells a super personal story, which he has never shared publicly. So yeah, enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, Whitney Cummings, and she's in the van. Very far away. <laughs> you guys think I have COVID? Um, good to know. <laughs> Out of an abundance of caution, we are taking it very seriously. But it's exciting because we haven't had a guest in the van. I mean, dude. Since who? But, Bert? I mean, we've only had two before. We had Tony Hawk and we had Bert Kreischer. Yeah. Oh, and, and then Drew, you did, but that you was did Rhonda over Zoom and right. Dewey over Zoom. I mean, the pandemic yeah. hit. The Zooms have been so hard. I feel like comedians, we work so uh, tirelessly on developing good comic timing, and then you get on Zoom and there's like a two second delay. Yeah. Have you done any comedy bit, uh, comedy shows on Zoom? No. Mm -mm. Fuck no. no. It's the worst. No. I don't yeah. hate myself that much. <laughs> <laughs> and then people can record, record you and... Just a the, fucking there's nightmare. Also, comedy is the whole point of comedy is it's in front of straight live strangers right. in the room right now. Here. You have agents, I presume, that have been trying, just racking their brain, trying to figure out how to sell tickets. What virtually. if you hang from an airplane <laughs> and fly over a town? You know, yeah, everyone's trying to get super creative about it. And I just I think that it is kind of interesting that the job we chose involves people sitting shoulder to shoulder and exhaling for about an hour. Yeah. <laughs> and then also taking drinks from a stranger in the dark right. to put up to their mouth. And the whole like, but they're gonna be in face masks. Like we also rely on that sound. Right. I, if we go, I will quit comedy if I tour around America and hear like muffled laughs, I'll just think I'm bombing. Yeah. My brain can't override, but they're wearing masks. And then Bert's doing a, a drive Drive-in comedy. Comedians in cars with comedy. Yeah, yeah. What is it? The drive-in drive movie nights. theater. The nights, uh, <laughs> summer nights is what it's called. Yeah. And a, and a laugh is a honk. Like, people are like, honk, 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 honk. <laughs> is that true? No, I don't know. I feel like it's a drive right? Like, if it's a... <laughs> Like it's like a nice beat. That's hilarious. Right, if someone yeah. wants to leave, you just see them backing out. Uh -huh. <laughs> You're just like, yeah, it's yeah. funny though. Like little little light taps. If it's like a yeah, standing O's, just fucking yeah. oh, hand on God, the horn. That's yeah, like, my night. Can you guys roll your hazards. windows down <laughs> so I can hear the laughter if right. there is some? Um, that's, oh, that's brutal. Weird. They, they're trying to do a lot of outdoor comedy, which never worked pre-COVID. Um, it's a lot of that. Yeah. Uh, like during the day, comedy under a tent. Um, I'll wait a couple months. Right. I'll just stay home, write more stuff, wait a couple months, engage with the fans. We're, I mean, we're very lucky that we record podcasts. For sure, and we're new to it. We're new to it, and it's also... I know we were kind of born to do it. Like, you just have that skill, right? But it's also a lot of work. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. You know, I think if we were doing stand-up right now, the at least my podcast would be very sloppy and kind of... Well, he, here's how I view it. And I've been thinking about it a lot because, like, particularly recently, I've just felt all of a sudden overwhelmed mm. with anxiety, stress over the getting of guests. Uh, yep. It's like, it, you know, and... and it, it just it just landed on me like a ton of bricks like in the last week like the fear of asking right i don't like fucking asking yeah. i feel like vermin <laughs> i feel like vermin like i, I feel like a rapist right 100 percent. it does feel that way yeah because it, for me it's like the most annoying question somebody can ask will you do to my say podcast? hey i'm famous i'm gonna get you more followers and more views and make people like you more there's that that's and what you're actually asking right you know and i think it takes a long time for people to catch up with how successful they are and we never view ourselves the way other people view us it, it's I, just crazy it's just i'm crazy. always shocked when someone says yes first of all shocked <laughs> right. and then coming up until the day i'm like are you sure 
Are you right. sure? Je maybe you thought I was someone else. Like, are you sure you want to? You don't have to come. I can come to you. It's going right. to be like 10 minutes max. I'll donate all my proceeds to you. You have a charity. <laughs> do I, like, I can't. It, the, it, the hardest thing for me is to accept a yes when I do get the nerve up to ask. Do you I'm ask? I'm okay with accepting the yes. I ask personally. You ask personally? It's interesting. And I was talking to um, someone about it recently about, you know, I'm in the 12-step program. I'm in CODA. And, like, I have put myself in a situation where every week I have to do my worst nightmare, which is ask someone for help or yeah. to do something for me. And it's still so hard. And even sometimes when I'm in an interview, I'm like, I'm going too long. I'm pushing it. They don't want to be here. They're miserable. They're having a great time. I love the the fact we are so distorted in our thinking that we think in Hollywood people don't want to talk about themselves for two hours. Right. It's mm -hmm. all they want. It's all they want. I, mean, I like to think that. H however, uh, it's still just it's still just a fucking nightmare. You need to like yourself as much as we all like you. That's well, all. What the what thing? It's a very it's a very nice thing to say. Nice. I, you, uh, I mean, that's not my go to. I, I felt like <laughs> I felt you like how he just deflected that. I know he wouldn't even yeah. receive it. I said thank you. That's a very nice thing. Uh uh. It's a very true thing. Well, thank you. It's 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 it's. What what happened when you asked Demi Lovato? Um, that was a a, a little bit of uh. It took some time to put together. There was you know like a, a response right away like oh yeah I'll do it but then there was just like with the s scheduling the and man, you know yeah. yeah like I think that's what bums you out the most is like managing that like in case something Legit gets pushed sex. back you're like fuck well and I you, love doing that shit it's a little bit like you're at the it's a lot like you're at the mercy of somebody else yeah you know like I, I have a pretty good work ethic and so does Scott like God does Scott ever and it's like we, it. we just hammer like we, we just get things done and then now there's this this you know, extra layer, which we can't control. And you know what? And I think that it took me a while to learn this, and I haven't been podcasting that much longer than you. I will shoot like three in a week so that if the next person cancels, I have one right. already shot, ready to go. And sometimes I'll just do like an open to make it feel fresh, you know? Right. Because I, I think I was so, fr assuming everyone would always cancel or reschedule. Right. And and I wish that, that we would do a better job of getting out in front and ba mm. banking them. Yeah. But with what's going on like in yeah. the world right now, I'm kind of scared to bank out too far because the world's going to explode. Yes. It's going to actually explode. And Correct. Then... No, a meteor is heading. To... <laughs> I literally said... Yeah, aliens are next, and then the I meteor. Yeah, exactly. Well, the murder hornets were somehow the best news of 2020. Yeah. <laughs> you know you're in a fucked up situation. I remember just, like, opening my laptop, CNN, which I won't even go to anymore at this point, but it was just, like, meteor flying within... T and it was just like, fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> at this point, they should just cancel 2020, and, like, we should just take the rest of the year off. I know I said something on Instagram the other day where someone said the dumbest thing I bought for 2020 is an event planner <laughs> it's just like it you know but this is like honestly I do feel like I know everyone's gonna think I'm so LA but like the universe is serving you in such a way because no one's able to really do anything except exactly the thing you created which is a you know van that comes to your house and you're six feet away and you get to vent out what's going on with you you know like I feel like it took the pandemic for me to ask a couple people because I was like, oh, I, I can't ask them when things are up and things are busy, but now they have nothing to do and I'm doing them a favor mm -hmm. so they can get out of their house and away from their weird marriage or whatever. Right. I mean, we switched it up pretty good, dude. Like, I mean, dude, I just, I think that's what it is, is that I just got really ambitious. I thought, you know, here, I'm ju I've jumped on the podcast bandwagon. Let me just blow people away with like, oh my God, I can't believe Steve-O got Demi Lovato. Yeah, you know? it's pretty like, wild. I can't believe Steve-O got Shaq. You know, all the, and I just was convinced in my mind, if I got enough, like, really impressive guests, uh -huh. I would hit a tipping point, and yeah. then all of a sudden, the floodgates would open, yeah, and it yeah. would be easy. Yeah. But then it felt like, oh, wait a second, the tipping point isn't doesn't seem to be happening, and it's actually going to be well, up no, to No, because then me. people go, oh, he had Demi Lovato. He's fine. <laughs> <laughs> he had Shaq. No, right. I'll just, yeah. Right, so I just, I actually, like, was sending, like, you know, like, really frustrated, <laughs> like, butthurt text to my podcast team saying, hey, guys, look, if it's going to be up to me to do all of the booking, like, I'm just telling you, like, I don't know how much longer I can do it because yeah. it's really, it's really, like, making me stressed out and, and unhappy. So what about, yeah. let's hire a booker. 
Oh, did you do that? I, I'm looking into it. How expensive? <laughs> <laughs> but but hold on, hold on, hold on. I am gonna just and tell me to shut up at any time. Oh no, I, I, I don't. I actually have to work on on fucking shutting up myself. That's I don't think my... so. I disagree. I okay. think that you talking is quite a fucking gift. I learn something every time I talk to you, and the feedback I got. I sent you some of them because I would get carpal tunnel if I screen grabbed all of them. The feedback <laughs> I got when you were on my podcast. Men were texting me like this made me want to go to a 12 step program. This made me hmm. want to step up for my wife in the quote. It still gives me chills. I want to be the man that my girl deserves. Yeah, I'm, I did. I, I, I'm doing the work to become the man that, that the loves. love of my life deserves. I mean, I'm sure you broke a couple people up because a lot of women were like, <laughs> oh, my God, that's the sweetest thing. Now I'm going to wait for the man who like, would say that. Yeah. So I'm sure it fucked up a couple relationships. But I mean, I think that we have to remember in this podcast thing as someone who is deeply cripplingly insecure and define myself through my relationships with others of like, you like me, I must be good. Right. You, know, you don't like me, I must be bad. So. I think it took me a while and and to realize like I don't need giant celebrities on my podcast, you know? Like who am I going to have the best chemistry with? Who do I genuinely want to hang out with? And I think that's what, you know, Rogan and Burr and all these people, that's what they do so well is yeah. they just surround themselves with their friends a little bit. Right. You know, none of those guys really had celebrities on for a while. Right. Can I tell you that I'm honored to have you as a friend? Come on. It, it really it's is. the best. <laughs> I feel yeah. so lucky. I mean, it's it's uh, uh, like uh, what, what you were describing earlier. Like, no, really. Like, you can back out any time. Like, I'm just sitting here. Like, man, Whitney Cummings. It's like, like I, I said on your podcast how when we really met officially for the first time coming out of the comedy store. Yeah. And you were so warm to me. And, and I just improv. thought, man. Oh, yeah, the improv. Exactly. I remember it. And I just remember thinking like, wow, well, like, because yeah, I, I have had in the comedy world of stand up comedians, uh -huh. this like sort of self-consciousness, this insecurity, like, yeah. oh, nobody wants to view Steve-O as a stand up comedian. Yeah. But like, you really uh, being warm to me and and, uh, and us, you know, meeting up and, and going to your show in, in Vancouver, that your show, your last, uh -huh. your, your, <laughs> You know, I, I got to admit, too, because I saw it, I saw, I think, like the second or third performance before you actually taped that's the special. That's right. That's right. So, so I didn't even like watch this because I had seen it. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's truly. It. You had seen it verbatim. Yeah. And it, it was. Minus the robot. A robot came out at right. the end. <laughs> All right. And then there was that disastrous meeting with the robot. I think most people are aware that, and if they're not, Whitney for her last comedy special for Netflix, which is so Unbelievably, I told you it was a home run. When... No, you can I tell you? I, I don't. I think it is so important, and it's taken me a long time to realize who my tribe is. You know, who my um, sort of go-to people are that I can trust, and how to make new old friends. You know, I think um, when you click with somebody, when you trust someone, just like go for Because I have spent my whole life trying to make bad relationships work and try to make narcissists love me and try to make alcoholics get sober with my love and whatever the <laughs> fuck bullshit. <laughs> you can meet someone right away and feel like, yo, yeah, we're family, period. And mm -hmm. we just met and it was like that. And there was no weirdness and there was no like, oh, you have a girlfriend. Can I not text you? It was just like straight up. Like the way you live your life is so clean. Um, and your motives are so pure that it was just, I think we had this thing right away. But when I was doing that, I knew you just enough to have the gut instinct that I could trust you, but not at all enough to where I felt like you, uh, uh we're kissing your ass. And yes. Blowing, yes. And, blowing smoke. and you didn't know how insecure I was and how I'm hanging by a thread. Uh, I mean, <laughs> so I knew you weren't saying it because you know that I would have jumped off a building had you said anything else, but you said you're like, you're sitting on a bomb. And yeah. that totally drove me into I mean, my special with confidence. And let me qualify that statement too. I have so much difficulty sitting through an hour of stand-up oh. comedy. Like it is just so different. Like I lost respect for you for being there, frankly. For, for, <laughs> for, 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 the, for the most part, I don't even watch stand-up comedy. Yeah. You know, like I mean, all of course, all like there's 
the god the, the Chappelle one with yeah the fucking sticks and stones yeah. there's there's certain things that are just that blow my mind they're so good yeah but I just find that the majority of stand-up comedy is just really fucking mediocre and when I was at your show I'd never felt the urge to look at my phone once I like was oh dude is that thing just fucking being an <laughs> no, asshole no I tend to make things flaccid it's my personality <laughs> <laughs> whenever I talk this uh, long hey Paul can you yeah, get yeah, over yeah, there and uh, tighten up that little knob it's on me I'm the, I'm the I, fluffer I, sh- I should know how to do <laughs> this god i'm being such a stereotype of a woman but like i think that you know for you podcasting it, is yeah. so yes thank you i don't and, need and, a and, man's and, and, help you millennial what are you a millennial on, on the arm paul uh tighten up that little fucking screw this one yeah these are my oc white mic arms how old are you 30 30 oh yeah. do you have a but girlfriend he so does why do you have a scar have a oh my uh, god can i, I tell you super hard one time can I? Okay, we were. Wait, what's Jesus. The thing I'm tightening? This no, no, it's, that, come, it's attacking. Look, see how it's attacking me. That that scar comes with like three others. Yeah. Yeah. No, I see. I okay, this is there. this is Paul. I love a guy who's so handsome that he can have that shitty a mustache. This is my first mustache. <laughs> and he's just like, I don't I give a fuck. You like You're that? like what Are Hitler wanted. <laughs> Yeah, maybe yeah. pull the elbow a little more. For sure. I, you know. That is and such then, fucking. I think that feels good. Does it feel good to you? Yes. Okay. Excuse okay, me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Time's up. Good. Okay. Um, so s- since since you asked, Paul is gorgeous. He's uh, my editor, and uh, and you know he just does all kinds of great stuff. We were in Peru where I found Wendy. Okay, it was this uh, this YouTube uh, fucking reality show. Yeah, with yeah. Like, uh, well, I've seen the YouTube of when you got her. Yeah, with Chuck Liddell and a bunch yes. of YouTubers and stuff, and we all it was like mountain climbing with the stars. So, this crazy Amazing. experience. It was kind of whatever. But Paul was the the digital department head, right? Uh-huh. And whatever that means. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I promise this is gonna get really juicy right now because on the last night, the rap party, they all went out to like uh, some club. I showed up at the rap party. I'm a sober guy. I was there for like a half an hour. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, okay, guys, yeah, I'm, I'm out. Good. And the next day, we're all heading to the airport. Where's Paul? He was like, I wonder where Paul is. And and it didn't even occur to me. I didn't even know. I didn't even find out until like a couple of weeks later. But nobody could find Paul. <laughs> and uh, and they were looking around. And then they got to the point of let's call hospitals. Let's call jails. Let's call, you know, the, all the whole thing. Nobody could find Paul. And then somebody just had the thought to go to the nightclub that they were all at the night before. And, and actually go on the roof of the <gasps> nightclub. And then look down from the roof. Oh my God! There was a fucking yeah. there was a fucking construction site like all fenced around, so you would never have been able to see it from the ground. You could only see from the roof that Paul fell off the fucking roof of this three-story building, landed in a pile of rubble, okay, <laughs> and was stuck there, unable to move, with a, a completely collapsed lung, like a shattered like arm yeah it was bad well it was first of all it was a four-story building <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> i really don't think a more tragic messed up story has ever been funnier but just wait paul's gonna reveal how shockingly serious his injuries were and we're all gonna laugh our butts off about it but before that i want to tell you about what's on my right wrist right here you might have noticed me wearing this for the last good month or two it's called a whoop strap it's a fitness tracker and i'm telling you right now i have no plans of taking it off ever and i don't have to take it off ever because the charger which i keep in my pocket at all times slides right on it's right there it's charging and this thing gives me insights into my health and fitness that are unbelievable. It knows when I lay down. It knows when I fall asleep. It knows how much REM sleep I got, how much deep sleep I got. It knows when I exercise. It can actually tell me when I just got on my bicycle and cycled. You know, like it's got me skateboarding again because right within the app, I'm skateboarding, you know? And uh, I'm just getting more exercise than ever. I'm understanding my sleep, how many disturbances I have, how much my body's recovered. It's telling me what I need to do to optimize my fitness, my health, my day. 
I mean, dude, I want everybody to try this. So if you go to whoop.com, that is W-H-O-O-P.com, and use the promo code Stevo, you're going to get 15% off at checkout. And it is so worth it. I really feel like I'm on the verge of being healthier at 46 years old than I've ever been in my life. And it's got a lot to do with this thing. Man, with the strain coach, the sleep coach, the... It's really incredible. So try it again. Whoop.com. Use the promo code Stevo. You get 15% off at checkout. You're going to be so glad you did it. No. And yeah, I, I just woke up on the ground. I don't remember even Wait, being you, on the roof. Did you think you were going to die? Yeah. No, no. Uh, to be honest, I never He's thought like, no, I'm, like, right. I'm going to die. Found me. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. But Paul, I know how, how long were you down works. there for? Like, so I probably woke up at like 9 a.m. or something. And they didn't, and they find, didn't find me till like 3.30 in the phone? afternoon. My phone was dead. My walkie talkie was dead. My burner phone yeah, was head dead. Of <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So he was he, trying to drink his own pee. Yeah, I tried to drink my own pee. I was just so thirsty and hot. And, it was and rough. Everything was broken. I did little list your injuries, Paul. So I broke my my femur, my humerus. I shattered my wrist. Jesus. I broke six ribs in nine places. I sh- Do you remember I, falling? I don't remember falling. That, thank God. I punctured both my lungs, but only one of them collapsed. Does that happen when a rib goes into it? <laughs> I don't God. know. Uh. I don't know. And then I hit my head super hard, uh, and I had frostbite. Were you drunk? I thought you were hot. <laughs> what do you mean you had frostbite? Well, well because... <laughs> Pick a lane. <laughs> it's really hot. I frostbite. Well, it's, like, it's really hot, Paul. <laughs> it's like... Uh, a lot of holes in this story. Oh. It's really cold at what? night, but it's hot in the day. It's like a like a desert climate sort of a thing so at night i had this big (laughs) winter jacket that like production gave me to work on this mountain climbing show Mm -hmm. but then i fell wearing that jacket i bet that jacket saved a lot of maybe it did it was puffy but i woke up in the day and i'm stuck in this jacket and i I can't even get it off so i'm just like baking in the sun in this big black like yeah what happens when your lung collapses like is it was it hard to breathe or you Mm. didn't notice until fucking they told you I, i mean I think he I, For <laughs> me, it was more. Drink, I knew the, the ribs. My ribs were broken. Uh, I couldn't tell that my lung was collapsed at the time. He said he woke time. up at 9 a.m. and they didn't find him until like 3:30 in the afternoon. And he had all that shit broken. He was laying on a pile of rubble. And then when they came up to him and actually found him, he said, "Can I have some water? I'm really thirsty." <laughs> <laughs> I was. Yeah, I and was very thirsty. Did you feel pain in the wrist you shattered? I felt the pain everywhere. Yeah, I mean, it, soul. Everything, everything hurt. But I kind of woke up with the Were pains. Were you crying? No, I don't. I didn't cry. It was just a lot of like. Ah, were there Were there any that. points where you like you were like help? Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah, nobody yeah. Was listening Oh yeah, to you? dude, all all day. Yeah. Is there was, any footage of it? No, there's the no footage camera? of it. Is there a picture of you? Did you snap it? No, nah, there's nothing. Uh, there's no <laughs> footage like that. There's a there's news footage because they put out like it was a search party, so the news caught on that that. that someone was missing so when they actually <laughs> found me and the police and the ambulance showed up there's also these news cameras so there is a news story that like played locally where you can see me getting pulled out on a stretcher out of this construction site and wait stuff like can that. we get to the real question what the fuck were you doing on the roof that's a good question <laughs> I'll... a girl pushed you <laughs> a girl pushed you <laughs> you were up there with a girl no no i was out there by myself Totally I by myself. Was a chick yeah, right, dude. No, there was. Uh, just jerking off. There were the lots knife. of theories because there were like prostitutes at the bar that night. So that everyone thought like maybe something happened with these prostitutes and like someone tried to kill me or something. But I think I just went up to the roof and tried to like pee off of it or something. Like I was kind of soaking up tried the moment. Someone to kill you. For sure. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. What are you but talking but, you but don't nobody remember stole... falling. You were roofied and then pushed. <laughs> dude, <laughs> it's you, possible. You were murdered, dude. Maybe. <laughs> what are you? T- about. Maybe I don't know. I wish I knew. I like I would. No, I'm telling you. <laughs> I, we know. We solved it. Yeah, maybe uh, I survived murder. Dude, the only real hole in the story for me is that he said he didn't think he was gonna die. How the fuck did you not think you're gonna die? You were tr- like in an enclosed area. I think I'm gonna die every day when I'm I don't not know. In I just I. <laughs> I don't know, but to be honest, there was never a moment where I was like, I'm going to die. I never feared. I was like, they're going to find me. They'll figure it out. It's a giant production team. It's like, you know, I figured right. they just they had to find me. 
So. I would have fucking died like minute four because I'd be tripping myself out so hard in the head. I'd, <laughs> I'd just go like full. What was the movie uh, where James Franco just saw? Oh yeah, arm off? <laughs> <laughs> It yeah, felt like my, that. Mine would have. Mine would have been felt like that. The movie would have been called Two for me because I would have cut it off at hour fucking two. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. <In> Thirty-five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was an intense day. So yeah, that's Paul's scar. How old were you? <laughs> this was I was twenty seven. Have you? Uh, do you have a history of peeing off roofs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kinda. Like if what I'm do you on mean, a kinda. I mean, yes or no? I think yeah, all I pee guys off roofs. I mean, yeah, you like your if you're on something must high. Have a nightmare fighting with you. You're that guy who's like, I didn't say. No, no, you I'm not. A bitch. I no, said you're no, no. Acting like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm easy He's to argue with. Us. I totally. <laughs> Yeah, but I just, I don't know, guys just like to pee off of stuff. Did you cheat on me? Define cheating. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you accuse me of cheating? <laughs> I mean, you're the guy that's just like bringing back so many memories. And when you ask a guy like, hey, where were you till 2 a.m.? Where was I <laughs> till 2 a.m.? Like they're trying to come up with an answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As they're repeating your questions. You, what, why do you have to repeat my question? Yeah. yeah. I, I think uh, a TSA guy said that most people can't remember lies three stories in. Cause yes. Because they, they only think about it, you know, like the first two. Ah, oh, man, I'm so glad. Well, I, I felt four stories. Well, I'm like, so. dude, just in, give me the respect of coming up with your lie on the way home. Like, yeah. you know, this is gonna come up. <laughs> oh, just, this lipstick? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I bumped no, into a girl. Dude, what, not what was lying, the girl's name? Though, I'm now at the point where I'm so honest that I, I'm so polite, I'm rude. Okay. You know what yeah. I mean? I feel like I'm this pendulum's going too far in the other direction because I've been such a lying piece of trash. So polite, so you're long. rude, or so I honest, believe, you're rude. I believe there's a so. I, I guess I I think they're synonymous. My whole thing is like I never, you know, we're only as sick as the secrets we keep, right? And I never want to lie to anyone, so I'll just go out of my way to be like, hey, I know I laughed at that joke, but I don't like it. Right. Uh, <laughs> it's like, yeah. you didn't that, even, you're allowed to say nothing also. That's not polite. No. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to ever lie to anyone. Yeah. Right. You so know? so honest, you're rude. That's so great. honest, you're rude. Yeah. I'm uh I, I I'm the same way. Yeah, I, I like that though. I value that in people. Yeah. Like, at least you can trust them that they're being genuine. That's a good point. You know, you know I'll where take you a stand. genuine asshole over a fake kind person any day. Uh, tweet it. <laughs> you know, like, and, and I have the same, same feeling because, as you know, when, uh, and not because of anything that you've ever done, but I've shared with you when I've been like, man, I, someone didn't get back to me, and I feel like, yeah. fucking, what, what the fuck, like, just gonna just go radio silent? Like, that's such a bitch move. Yeah. And, uh, and then every time when it comes up and somebody, like, reaches out to me and I don't want to respond, or I don't, or I don't, like, or I, I, I don't want to do what they're asking me to do, I always think of it, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get right back to them, yes. and I'm going to say no. Yes. It's, it's a good yes. exercise. Yes. And also, I think we have to remember that, like, you know, especially in you booking this podcast, since this is going to go on for a while, like, most people, in my experience, in our business is a little dicey, but, like, if they want to say no, they'll just say no. I can't do that. I'm projecting my shit on them. Right. And then I lied for so long and did things that I didn't want to do out of obligation and pressure that when someone says yes to me, I think they're doing it codependently yeah. and I don't trust them. Well, right? what, instead of saying no, you come up with like a paragraph instead of like a sentence. Hey, I have a dry cough. I don't know. <laughs> I should probably take the t I mean, anything, yeah. anything, except except this past weekend when I didn't write you back. This is actually real. So I'm in Al-Anon. Uh, I can drink. I don't like to drink. It's just not for me. Uh, I'm not good at it. Like it makes me sick, gives me headaches. But anyway, uh, I ha was doing this sponsored con spawn con because look, I don't know when touring's coming back. <laughs> so I had a, like a shot of that I had to shoot for something. A shot of peanut butter whiskey. Spawn con. What's con? Sponsored content. Oh, gotcha. You know, like the and that's through your agent at UTA. Yes. I do. I've never had a representative that got me any fucking sponsored con. No spawn. The number of threats, <laughs> uh, the number of threats and mental manipulation I have to do to, you know, I think the way that I did it in the beginning was, and I, I never do. I think this actually would be an interesting conversation for your fans. Um, I never do any sponsored content unless it's something that I actually, I say no sure. to a lot of shit. I think audiences are too smart now. If I can make it funny, completely my own words be able to say like I can't believe they paid me for this I have no fucking idea if I can't say all that I won't do it but I started just 
tw- um, uh, Instagram storying a couple products that I just like. If I would just be like, hey, yo, this Ultima fucking mic stand, I just put in my podcast. It's awesome. Look at it. It looks, I'll just whatever. Make a jo- with no money, right? And then I think then brands start going, oh, he'd be open to this. Oh, we should talk to him. And then I just started fucking calling brands out in my show. I was doing some makeup tutorial thing. And I was like, Revlon, where's my contract, bitch? Right. And then they call me. Wow. <laughs> you know? So I think, um, you know, you have to, like, manifest it, ask for it, feel that you deserve it. You know, you have right. a huge following. Well, well, right on, man. Thank Maybe you. they just don't know. Yeah. I, uh, and, and, and of course, the, like the podcast, I mean, my podcast guy is great at finding sponsors for the show, and I'm the same way. I, I only agree to things yeah. that, uh, that, that I both use and that I really like. Yeah. Um, like but- I did this vegan, um, I'm obsessed with that cauliflower vegan pizza. And I was already just showing it all the time, being like, oh, it's made of fucking cauliflower. It's cra-. And then they just reached out to me and like, would you want to do an IG live? And I'm like, yeah, I'd be doing it anyway. Fuck mm-hmm. it. Yeah, that's great. You know, <laughs> I bet we, we definitely got sidetracked off your special and your robot. Oh, God, For the God. people who don't <laughs> know, you have this fan fucking tastic special on Netflix. It's called Can I Touch It? And for it, it was genius on your part, because not only is the, the stand up just genius and your your first joke uh of, of this special if, if i recall <clears throat> you know i've been uh taking some time just working on writing you know like i was writing roseanne's tweets <laughs> <laughs> you know what i didn't end up putting that put it out oh, you didn't special. put that in i didn't put it in the special yes you saw me do it it was just kind of like I don't need... I, did, I love that, that, that we just gave them something that they didn't know about. I know, I think... I that's right, it. you just got exclusive content. <laughs> wow. Dude, that was such a huge joke because everybody knows that know. Roseanne lost everything over a tweet. Yeah. He said, I've been, I've been writing, <laughs> working on Roseanne's show, but I've, 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 I was writing Roseanne's tweets. I just that's was fucking like, hilarious. I see, it's so... Doing stand-up is so hard because I think there, sometimes you have to give up jokes that fucking kill. That, that dude, I love that. That was your first joke, and it was just the whole place was whoa. And now we're on for this ride. Yeah. And as genius, and and then oh my god, like the marquee joke of it. It's like here we are in the Me Too movement. Right, right. And I understand how guys feel in the Me Too movement. <clears throat> it's me when I see a a service, service dog. dog at the airport. It says do not pet, but I want to. I want to pet it so bad. <laughs> you know. Like, so, but it works because I I've never pet a service dog with a vest on. I respect it. You know, uh, this I don't remember verbatim the joke, but that's then that's what women need at work. We need little uh, shirts that say <laughs> "Lady Working." Do, do not, not pet. touch. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. And I think that now making a special for people that are obviously, if you're a comedy fan, if you're listening to this, like they're kind of saying people only watch the first ten minutes. Your first ten minutes has to be cracking now. You know, so yeah. it's got to be like I would normally put a joke like that as my closer. And I was like, I'm so insecure and so obsessed with keeping the audience's attention. Since there are so many choices now and people can so easily go, oh, I'll just finish that later. Or, you know, right. You have <clears throat> to keep them addicted to whatever you're watching. So I moved that up top and then I put a robot at the end. Truly, because right. I was like, if people didn't finish it and said, oh, I'll just finish this later, they'd be at a party and someone would go, yo, did you see what happened at the end? Right. And they'd go back. It was back genius. And, That's it was very genius. Kind. And you let the cat out of the bag personally, letting me know that uh, your retention for your special was yeah. through the, through the <laughs> yeah. roof. Yeah, I, I just was like, uh, we have got to adapt. You know, this whole thing where comedians are like, I want to be able to say the N-word. Like, in the amount of time you've been complaining about this, you could have written some new jokes, you know? Like, mm-hmm. um, why can't I do this, Joe? Goodness, just write new jokes, just adapt, just evolve, you know? It's, it's on us to do that. But yeah, I think that having a, a genius hour of stand-up, it's just not enough anymore. You know, that's true. Like, uh, that's I mean, true. maybe it is, that's true. maybe it Depends isn't, you but want. you were so clever <clears throat> by uh, having this this robot and tying it all into the whole like Me Too moment. And it's like, here, I've got this this robot, this sex doll, this, this <laughs> fantastic thing. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's just it was just a great gimmick. And you titles know? are always weird. I wanted that. <laughs> so funny everybody said to me they were like netflix never gives you notes on anything they never tell you you can do whatever title you want unlike <coughs> a lot of these other networks that micromanage you and i was like oh my god that's amazing i wanted to call it bear claw because that was <laughs> the name of the robot and i was like just bear claw with a ro-. like i'm watching that i loved chris rock's tambourine i thought that was just i was like i want to know what that joke is you right. know and i sent it to Netflix and they were like, no. 
Right. <laughs> Kids, no, they, 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 they told me this, the titles that drove eyeballs and why, and helped me understand why. And so I decided to call it Can I Touch It? Because when I have the robot with me, everyone's like, oh, can I touch it? Can I? Can well, I? right. Plus, it's the, the, that epic service dog joke. Can yes, I touch it? That, can I touch it? And then right. I thought it was interesting that no one ever asked me if they can touch me. <laughs> but right. then when the robot, everyone's like, is it? Can I? I don't want to. Yeah. yeah, you have done that so to me sensitive. in the job interview, and you was, know, three years ago when you grabbed my ass. It, it was the, the genius of the robot goes even beyond the special because it was such a promotional tool. I mean, you went oh, on a right. you went on a press tour right. and Took you had the me. fucking robot, and yeah. the robot actually like so you can program it to talk, yep. to move, yep. facial expressions, That's right. laughs, like the whole thing. That's right. This is like you know, cutting edge technology, like fucking artificial intelligence, like robot. And and so you you went around and you got like a bunch of your friends to film promos for like social media and stuff to drive traffic to the special, which was just completely genius. I love you have inspired me a lot. Like the, the not only your work ethic, but the way you're able to create these holy shit moments. Like the things that matter right now, I think in terms of getting people to give a fuck about what you're doing. I think comedy is like there's so much of it. There's so many specials to watch. There's so many. I think being able to really shock someone, really yeah. surprise someone, or touch their heart, vulnerability, which is why I think this is essential because you have such an incredible heart and brain and people don't get to see that. Like this is like gonna make people that like, we're like, oh, Steve-O's in town this weekend. Should we go to Steve-O's in town? We have to get tickets right this second. I think well, that's the difference. I, I appreciate it. But, but, but you know what I'm getting at is yeah. that when you brought your robot over to oh, right. film with me at my house, right. here I'm sitting here like, oh, okay, you know, Whitney comes, is coming over to help, like, to get me to shoot, like, a promo for her special. Like, oh, fuck, I got to be, I got to be funny. And I was, like, just so... Like, what, what am I going to do? And I didn't have a plan, and I just was... So I sit down with this fucking robot. Neither did I, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I, I sit down with the robot, and, 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 you know, it's just... You're like, yeah, just riff. It's all good. And, like, just out of my mouth comes, like, so what are the chances of me fucking you? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, why did I say that? How did that just come out of my mouth? <laughs> you know? Like, I was just in this, like, position where I was just, like... Just, I don't know, just trying too hard. I was like, oh. I was like, that fucking sucked. And then for the rest of the day, I I'm could like, feel <laughs> it. Like it's so funny because I could feel it. And I, and this is how insecure I am. I was just like, he doesn't want to be here. I shouldn't have asked him. Well, no, I wanted to so much, but I just wanted to be funny. And yeah. I wanted... What what time did you go to bed that night? Because you're spinning out so hard on that comedy. Oh my god, <laughs> he didn't and, sleep. And dude, like, then again, I'm just thinking, like, how fucking disrespectful of my girl. But you and know? then I wished. And then I blame myself when you first told me about this. I was like, God, I wish I had given off the vibe that he felt comfortable going, hey, do you mind cutting that? I mean, I probably could have, but I just didn't want, like, I don't like to censor myself. I kind of. That's so funny because you're doing, you're thinking that, he's thinking that. Yes. We're just all fucking then, sick in the we, head. I just, we're all just want to take care of each other's feelings. That's so funny. So, like, it, but it is, right. it is, you know, so interesting because. You know, people that listen to comedy podcasts, I think they really appreciate it when comedians say stuff like this, which is just like, I have wasted so much time. I have fucked up so many relationships. I have just been embarrassed myself so much just being desperate to be funny and then just being consumed with shame afterwards. Oh, my God. I was so ashamed and I, I just felt it was so disrespectful of my girl. And it was just, you know. And it <clears throat> corrodes our esteem, you know. But then... <clears throat> But then, uh, you know, all this time later, of course, of course, that was the promo because that was like the the moment. Like it was the most like, so wow, weird. I can't believe you said that or whatever. And like, and then I'm like, I can't, you know, obviously it was hilarious. If I cut it, he's gonna see that I cut his right. His jokes I mean, whatever. Out. That no, was yeah, like, <laughs> right. And so it's just all it's all crazy mayhem. Um, <laughs> it, 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 it comes out. <clears throat> my girl's like. Wow, so I saw that and I was like, Oh babe, oh, I'm so God. I'm so fucking sorry I said that. I just was trying so hard and, and she was she she just appreciated it. She well, was like, Hey best. she was like, Hey, thank you for being honest. You know, I thought it sucked and I, it it means something to me that you would acknowledge that that sucked. And and so then there it was And never, to know why you did it. Right. You know? Well for most sure. people don't do that because like I think you're rare in a sense where like you've, you've done enough work on yourself where you can explain it like the average 
guy is going to be like, what the fuck? Like, get defensive and then react. <laughs> yeah. And then it's an argument. Why are you being so sensitive? Why uh -huh. are you talking? Yeah. I mean, I'm I fucking this. It's called comedy. Yeah. <laughs> I did this for a long time. I'm a fucking comedian. I have to be right. able to talk about everything. I could, you know, right. I would go on stage and talk about all the dicks I sucked or whatever. And then my dude's in the back just like, Ugh. you know, <laughs> and I'm like, fucking comedy. Get right. get stronger. It's like, what is, who is that? Right. About? Yeah. No, so it was never an issue. And uh, interestingly, <laughs> I like once I saw you're doing the podcast, I'm doing the podcast, and I was just like, man, I wonder like uh, what what Whitney's YouTube channel is like. You know, like the podcast is she is she? I don't even look at it. Is I don't she even putting know. up? Do you have one podcast, one YouTube channel? I think so. And, and the, the podcast goes up as well as like you know whatever content. So I do the podcast uh, comes out Wednesdays, just audio. Thursday it then comes out on YouTube. Ooh. I just and I don't mean I'm not complaining. I'm very grateful. I, I I think anyone that takes the time to make a comment, even if it's negative, you love me. You love me. <laughs> you took the time to make a comment about how much you hate me. You love me. Right. Mm, uh, so I'm now at this place where I'm like, not, you know, but I think the YouTube comments are tenu uh, uh, genuinely predominantly male. And I get a lot of like, you're busted. You know, what what's you in busted? your face. Even yeah. your demographics are all male? I, I think YouTube in general is more male. Uh, but there is a thumbs down button, which I just don't appreciate. Like, I just, so weird. I don't know why that <laughs> needs to be there. Do you have a contact that I can? The consensus? I'll reach out. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. So I, re I think I just get, I just <laughs> avoid looking at YouTube comments because I don't, or the thumbs down. Uh, thing. I, was ter I was terrified to look at any comments. Absolutely terrified, and I didn't, thank God. Good. But what I did notice was that on your YouTube channel, the little video of me asking to fuck your robot <laughs> was like the most viewed video. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's cringy and awful, and that's probably why it attracted so many views. I will take it down. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not it kidding. Didn't. No, 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 no. I'm no. going to. <laughs> she already did. No, no, no. I'm yeah. Yeah. I just, that, she just texted the, the, the somebody. Num yeah. The numbers are way too impressive to do that, okay? I'm, <laughs> now he doesn't want you to take yeah, it down no, with no, the no, numbers. No, no, no. And I, Adam Devine. I, I am a fucking attention whore, and to be sitting in the number one position, I, I can't even remember what it is, but it was like high in the ranks of your most viewed oh, videos. Oh, you know exactly yeah, what the number yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> he looked at it before we lost service here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> refresh, refresh. <laughs> yeah. Watching it over and over uh -huh. again to get that, views. That, uh -huh. that fucking video is not going anywhere. Yeah. He <laughs> felt so much shame after saying it until he saw the views. Then I he was able to cannot. sleep. I cannot. I should, you should get the, re the YouTube revenue off of that. <laughs> <laughs> you really should. Uh, Which I never check, by the way. I don't even know if that happens. There, there, there. It's a, it's a crazy deal. The, the, the YouTube revenue situation. Yeah. I mean, I, which brings me to a question I was dying to ask you. Okay. Oh, and I've actually got some questions, and so like we've been just, you know, letting the time get away from us. But, but this is what I was told podcasts are. Right. That's, that's I'm telling you. You yeah. have a hard like just we this I has know. been a great conversation. I think it has. We're such perfectionists. We're like, hey, we need to get to right. like more quiet. Everyone's like, we're enjoying this. Why right. do you guys OCD hate yourself? Perfectionism. Yeah, you're just hanging out. Like my, my most viewed podcast is the one with Burt Kreischer and I had zero questions. Yeah, it's just, just fucking they they it's like they get to hear people interviewed all the time. They want to just hear us shooting the shit. Yeah. Right. Okay, but I do have a juicy but yes. question. <laughs> uh -oh. I, I like there's enough like I, I know better than to ever ask like financial like numbers. I'm you know, no, I know that you are rich, <laughs> but, but, uh, you know, without putting actual numbers on, because that's just a little bit, yeah. you know, not classy, <laughs> but when, when, I just yelled, I'm rich in a trailer. <laughs> I'm classy. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what, what I do think is okay is to ask, what is your, like over your career, yeah. what, what has been the, the predominant revenue stream? Mm -hmm. Because you're on camera talent. Yeah. You're on stage stand-up comedian. Right. You're like off camera producer and you're off camera writer. Mm -hmm. So is it as a writer, as a producer, as a on camera talent or as a stand up comedian, which of these revenue streams mm -hmm. and have they taken turns being in the number one position? She's like, I'm so rich, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> That's how rich I am. I'm just waiting to ask when I can buy this van from you. Um <laughs> No, I I am going to be very clear. I make that joke because I am consumed with shame about money. I'm consumed with fear about it. I think there 
I did go through a little bit of a thing where uh, there was an announcement of how much money I was making from a show I created. And the it was Whitney show? The Two Burke Girls. Oh, wow. And it, the projection was like $40 million in syndication. That's not what it ended up being. <laughs> like, I just am like always feel like uh, people see me as like super financially successful. And um, it's just weird. People make jokes about it. I, I just I just have shame around it. I grew up in an environment where we did not have money, but we pretended we have had money. And it was all about like keeping up with the Joneses and stuff and getting the latest sneakers, but not paying the heating bill. And wow. my mom having the nicest, you know, <clears throat> Chanel shoes, but we didn't have food in the refrigerator. So it's like I just had a big like I have a lot of shame around uh, money. I will also tell you uh, the biggest ways I've lost money is both my parents had strokes without health insurance. So I lost a lot oh. to the ICU and to paying for a sibling's uh, rehab for a couple of years. So I should have more is wow. what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, you know, I, I really relate. <clears throat> I really relate to uh, to the shame around money. Mm -hmm. and, and and for me, it's the, it's a little bit the opposite because I grew up with a super successful father. Whoa. I grew, I, I grew up moving around country to country born in england six months old moved to brazil because dad was the president of all of pepsi cola in all of brazil whoa like, by the way can i say something really quick i was in an argument the other day with the guy i'm sleeping with i'm a pepsi person how about that good i'm not a coke person <laughs> good i there i said it at a restaurant do you go on do you have pepsi or coke products and you get pissed if they only have coke no products? they usually people will go to, uh ask for a coke and they'll go we only have pepsi and i'm like yes i'm right. shocked that you would even drink a soda you're oh, vegan. I've been white trash. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I have. Do you, do you do diet or regular? I just go for the regular. I had such bad eating disorders for so long that it's like I can't get in that slippery slope. Okay. You know, so I'll just do. If I do one Coke once a week, that will satiate me. So I have to do nine Diet Cokes a day. Good. <laughs> I right, and plus the diet makes you fatter anyway. That's right. And just like bloated and you're not hydrating yourself and whatever. So my new thing is I eat the thing that's full fat, full calorie, whatever, satiate myself. My inner child feels fed. And then I don't do the nasty half whatever aspartame. What is it? Aspartame. Aspartame. Cancer drink. Right. My, my dirty little secret is I, I, won't, I only drink soda water or coffee or regular water. But I'll drink a Coca-Cola mm. from the country I'm in. So if I'm in a different country, yes. I'll do that. Uh, that's I like, great. What a treat. I heard there's like there's like 27 different styles of Coca-Cola based off the country. Because oh, some wow. have only cane sugar. Some have only this type of product or and whatever. In America, it's corn syrup. Uh -huh. <laughs> but there they have actual sugar. Yeah. Yeah. If I just have, like, I I've gotten to the point with my eating stuff where if I just <laughs> kind of don't uh, restrict myself or deprive myself, I don't get into that sh shame addiction and that need for the pendulum to swing so hard so if i'll just have like a ice cold pepsi mm. uh and just then i won't eat like nine cookies at 2 a.m i read a comment on youtube yesterday that said god i love scott but stop eating those fucking cakes <laughs> <laughs> and I, that was like the only one i saw and i was just like bro cakes also means butt Maybe that's what they were talking yeah. about. No, he meant that fucking cake, I'm cake, fat. Cake. <laughs> and, if I, and then yesterday, two in one day, some girl just said something like, uh, I was I was talking to her on a text message, and she's like, dad bods and gray hair are in. And she's like, you must be killing it in 2020. Is this a girl that was flirting with you? We were just like having a conversation. Dad bods and gray hair are in. You're killing it this year. <laughs> My dad was never around. I don't know what a dad bod that, looks like. It looks uh, like this. There it is. <laughs> I think you're very hot. Yeah, he is. You and, are. And thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Where are you from? Pasadena. Nice, nice. Where are you from? Oh, you're from the East Coast. D.C. and Virginia, yes, sir. Uh, I know you, you were on the middle of a question to ask. Oh, yes, I money, was, my money. But, right. So for me, you know, I created a show that was uh, syndicated, which is really, as of two years ago, was kind of the only way to make money in television. You have points on the back end, right? right? Mm -hmm. Like a Will and Grace, a Chuck Lorre's show. You know, uh, Two and a Half Men, Mom, Big Bang Theory, all those. They have to go about 88 episodes normally in order to get syndicated, which means another network buys them. So everyone listening, you, how you see Seinfeld on TBS and you see Reba right. on T, uh, CMT, they pay a bunch of money to buy the whole show. And that's when you get your points uh, cashed in. And the points uh, of the value of the show depends on uh, how the ratings of the show depends on how valuable the points are, right? So Friends points were notoriously the most 
uh, lucrative. Baywatch. Baywatch. I, you know, <clears throat> comedies <throat> tend to syndicate better, but in the Baywatch day, I'm sure it was massive. I think Baywatch was notoriously the, the, biggest, the biggest, most valuable. That makes yeah. a lot of sense. Mm. I, I don't know, know why, but... Yeah. But wow. Yeah. So, I so, can't so, imagine so, why. So you said you created the show. Yes, so, myself so, and Michael Patrick King created it. And when does you, that mean producer, right? Or... You create it, so you get basically most of the back end, and then you're an EP in series and a writer in series, but okay. creator is where you get the... Right. The point. So I created the NBC show I did called Whitney, but we only went like 50 episodes or something. You need to go 88 to really cash in in syndication. Um, and then st touring and stand up, I do well. Uh, my specials, I do well, but I end up putting so much of my fee into the production that I don't end up keeping a lot of the money. What did the robot cost? <laughs> <laughs> uh, when we shot it, about 75 grand, now about 100 grand. Okay. Like maintenance and stuff? Uh, I, I brought her... To, watch it. Fees. Easy. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Why are you chiming in all of a sudden? <laughs> There's a tech question. Okay. I No. She's our, she actually... You guys probably have a lot of the same injuries. I brought her to Jimmy Kimmel and she fell off of a desk. Well, there you go. That's what I mean. Maintenance. Shattered her wrist and her whole face came off. So we had to get her new eyeballs. Uh, I just had to get new eyebrows put in because they're now doing hair on the eyebrows and they're soon going to make it so the eyes can be cameras so they can actually, the robot can address people. They can, you know, she oh, can shit. recognize you and go, hey, Steve-o, hey, Lux, good to see you. That's so cool. Where I, do you keep it? In my house. And do, my, you don't freak out at night in the dark and you're walking by and the eyes just go. Zzz. How many times? <laughs> She's off most of the time. Yeah, right. Yeah. You ever seen like a thriller movie like that shit? Can I tell you, <laughs> I have a theory that men are more afraid of robots than women. I realize it's very gender because it's you guys are like nothing else is really trying to kill you. And I feel like robots are the first thing that might be stronger than you, smarter than you, and might be out to kill you. Like, women, we're, like, used to people trying to kill us all the time. Yeah. It's a you know? I, don't, I don't know that I give a fuck about a, a, a fear of a robot. There is something called pathogen avoidance. You know when, when guys get, like, grossed out when they say, Ooh, you know, like, weirded out? It's how we evolved, essentially, to recoil when we see something that looks human but also mo doesn't move like a human, that looks sick or dead. It's our, our sort of... Uh, evolutionary way to not fuck something a corpse or like a chucky doll like yes. that would freak me the fuck out same thing at night by myself i'd be like this is out of here this feels like a conversation for your therapist not <laughs> us. how many times have you posted a picture of the robot and people are like wait a second is it her or is it the fucking robot i look i am <laughs> the robot we looked the same age like a year ago now i look about 40 years older than her i don't know if it's covid or stress or whatever i don't know i think because you're dating now i think that you're like i, I think you look fantastic and i'm Thanks. not trying to get in trouble with with my girl or anything like that but, but like when we showed up today i've seen your clips on instagram i think man you know whitney's really Thank you. Well, I do have four giant floodlights in my podcast studio. <laughs> I don't know what this situation is. I'm already worried about it. Um, but yeah, I started taking better care of myself. I started doing uh, the NAD drips and peptide injections. NAD is like... I Extends longevity of your telomeres. Wow. Is that right? Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> right? It yes, sounded yes. right. It Basically what it does is it... Uh, the ATP in your cells um, transfers some bullshit to some, some bullshit. bullshit, and then there's some kind of mitosis and meiosis. Mitochondria. It's a, that's exactly uh -huh. what it is. Actually, it's the food for your cells. You stop producing it over time when you get older, and this yeah. helps uh, basically put Lengthen. food. A lot of people use it uh, in. They're now using it as a treatment uh, in rehab. Uh, it's like anti-aging. That's right. Yep. That's wow. right. Because I don't want to do that. I already like was born looking like I had Botox and plastic surgery, so I have to watch it. You know. I, really I have, have oily skin, so like my dad and doesn't oily wrinkle. Oily skin's fantastic. Yeah. That's why you look so good. Thank you. So I'm always slathering myself with oil. You casually mentioned this guy I'm having sex with. Yeah. Is that so? This is not a boyfriend. Started dating my vet. You got a fuck boy. <laughs> you started dating your vet. <laughs> I, I'm not surprised at all. Like we got to talk about animals. Yeah. What's up with horse therapy? Oh, dude, horse therapy is the best. I cannot believe I haven't dragged you and Lux out there because you guys are gonna have horses at some point. It, it's ambitious. We're gonna need to work up to that for quite some time. Yeah. Like uh, horses are expensive. They're involved, right? Like. Can I just say something? The camera, please put on Steve. 
from here you look like you have a giant brown mullet because of the background <laughs> nice <laughs> and it keeps kind of throwing me off it, <laughs> it looks like your hair <laughs> so equine therapy uh which sounds very like rich to say uh i don't it is i don't rich. but i don't use saddles i don't use bits we don't use any force it's something what i do is called liberty training it's just you and the horse you don't wash the horse you know only in the summertime you can rinse it off but horses actually don't need to be washed that much i don't braid its hair i don't force it to jump or do anything um growing up i grew up in an alcoholic home don't be jealous and there was so much irresponsible communication in my home it was a lot of people pretending they were fine when they really weren't fine a lot of unrecovered Al-Anons, right? A lot of codependence. It's a lot of pretending everything is fine when your mom is stumbling down the stairs in front of all the neighbors. And it's a lot of irresponsible communication. No one ever said, I'm upset with you and here's why. It was a lot of like, no, I'm fine. When mm -hmm. everyone's clearly um, consumed with rage. And so I just was very confused as a child as a result and very untrusting of people's um, what anyone said when someone said you want to hang out I'm like do you really want do you, is that a you trying to you know mm -hmm. um, I like you but do you or are you just trying to fuck with me because if you like me that means you're gonna yell at me tomorrow like I, I just had very uh, dyslexic emotional dyslexia in terms of what was up what was down I moved to Rona Virginia when I was like 12 to live with my aunts. They had horses. I spent most of my time with them. And I was so relieved by how clear the communication is in the animal world. Like there's no passive aggressive, manipulative. Well, they run off energy. They only pick up on your energy. That's right. 100%. Mm -hmm. And they will let you know where you stand. They're not worried about you hurting their feelings. They're not worried about uh, hurting your feelings. The lead mare is in charge and the way that she behaves is to claim space, to be in charge, uh, to be proud and respect herself. And the more she does so, the more everyone respects her. Whereas I was taught, if you stand up for yourself, you're gonna hurt people's feelings. You're gonna make people angry. You're gonna upset a narcissist, right? So, so like horse therapy, you're saying that your horse is your therapist. Basically. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Basically, and when I first started doing it, because I grew up riding horses the wrong way. Horses were property. They were for your results only. You rid them. You broke them. I mean, they literally call it breaking. Yeah, you know, breaking you, its spirit. You break its spirit. That's exactly it's right. Awful. Yeah, and it's my terrible. spirit was very broken when I first started working with horses. Um, I had no idea to st how to stand up for myself. I had no idea how to respect myself. I thought that the nicer I was to something, the more it would like me, which is not the case. It comes off desperate and unctuous it's needy oh, energy that's me that's me to wendy it's repellent <laughs> yeah. Well, the, yeah. dogs Desperate. are slightly different because dogs no. do their uh, <laughs> their reward it can be food and affection whereas horses real reward is serenity yes you can give them carrots and shit like that just that just makes a fucked up diluted relationship but they can get grass whenever they want they can get food whenever they want they graze right and they're prey animals so they are clairvoyant and super hyper vigilant sensitive whereas dogs are predators and they don't have to think the same way they don't have to be as in tune to your energy um are you do you know we're talking about you my my sponsor is kind of like a horse whisperer cool and so i went with him one time and he's like here grab the reins yeah. and i did it and, and like the thing was like budging he's like dude What's tells up? me a lot about you you know like and so he kind of like told me a couple things to do and it started moving with me and it was it was weird what do you think um were you trying to control it I was scared, you know, so I had like nervous energy. So when you're scared, the horse goes, a horse can see that a mountain lion is hungry. Their, their job is to feel fear. So they feel your fear. A horse would never think this guy's scared of me or they, they don't think that way. So it's like, oh, there must be a, literally right. a mountain lion around. So any kind of fear, they are going to assume there's a predator close mm -hmm. by. But also to them, they don't have insecurity. They don't have shit like that. So insecurity, the need for a photo, the need to pet it, whatever it is, they just interpret that as fear. All that shit is just fear to them. There's fear or there's no fear. There's serenity or there's fear. And when there's fear, they just want to get the fuck out of there. Part of my initial work with my horse now was just standing in a pen with him a big pen so that he could go away when my energy was repellent and just seeing if he wanted to be near me just seeing if my energy was repellent or conducive to serenity and he'd come over and i go oh my god he came over mm -hmm. he, oh my god he's coming near me he's coming near me i hope he doesn't go anywhere and as soon as i went i hope he doesn't go anywhere i hope he doesn't leave he would leave because he was like what is this shit you know, he and it's just and I would stand there for an hour and I go, I hope he comes over. I hope he comes over. And he wouldn't come over because who the fuck wants to be around that energy? Mm -hmm. And then as soon as I was like, you know what? He's never going to come over. I guess I should just all coming over. 
you know, so as soon as I surrender to it and have no need for results, because that's the thing is we go through life and we want so much from everyone. We want them to like us. We want feedback. We want them to love us. And it's all the irony is what we chase. We chase away. Yeah. He really taught me that. So did you do that with your vet? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I some wrote Jedi mind a tricks. Couple checks. Uh, <laughs> He, it's interesting. I had a dog who got really, really sick. I don't have to tell you. It's just the most old age. He's yes, he's older and bigger and he had some autoimmune thing and nobody could figure out what it was. And he's on these pills and these pills and he can't walk. And, I, and he's like the love of my life and actually only like six. So it was like too soon. So I'm like in a fetal Ooh. position. Yeah. I've been like in fetal position. And then some dot look like I know everyone's doing the best they can, but there's a reason they call it a practice doctor practice veterinary practice they're practicing they're doing as much as they can with the information they have so i go to three different hospitals it's three different diagnoses i'm like totally freaked out you know you write you pay 500 dollars to three people and you still don't have an answer and i put him on these steroids that was just making it so he couldn't pee and he couldn't walk and it was just a nightmare and then uh i took it to him and he solved it right away so that was hot Whoa. i know wow. mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very hot and then i was constantly abusing uh my power uh as someone on television by like texting him all day all night like with questions and then and then, <laughs> and then the quarantine happened and the texting just turned into like so what are you doing mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like and then it just kind of it sounds like a little bit like a boyfriend uh oh. I mean, I don't know. That's kind of what I'm hearing. I don't know. What well, is it? How do you? What? She's like, define boy. <laughs> <laughs> she almost said that, but in a different way. <laughs> I literally was going to say, what's your definition of boy? Uh -huh. oh, I'm man. such a scumbag. Um, yeah, I think for me, I know myself, and I know that when that label comes up, the same with the I love you thing. You're uh, over it. I, it's not that. I'm, I am disgust. I am disgusting, and I am repelled by anyone who loves me. Um, like that, I don't want to be a part of a club that would have me right, as a right, member. Right. It's, it's <laughs> I think. I, I, yes, a claustrophobic yes. feeling. Oh yes, you're interested in me now. Right. You panic. I, I feel sick. It's more that like I um, I start to put way too much pressure, and I start. To, and I think this is part of my programming of like husband, 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 husband. Is your husband? Is your husband? Like I froze my eggs. Like four or five years ago. Ooh, that's yeah. the way to beat the clock? I think so, because before that, whether it's biological, whether it's social construction, whatever it is, whether it's the princess complex or the Disney movies or the fucking Katherine Heigl movies, I don't know what it was. But there was a, we're on a date, and if you order a beer, oh, he's going to order a beer, so what if we're here with a kid? Which he's just going to fucking drink a beer? It's everything yeah. turned yeah. into that, which is not fair. It's putting too much pressure on you, you know? And I would put every decision under a microscope and turn it into, well, when we're married, you're going to act instead of just letting someone be who they are. Right. Playing detective 24 seven, 24 seven. And like, and I, I know that about myself. I'm working on it in, in my recovery, but this sort of perfection I need in order to feel safe. I can, I can see too where what you described from the horses applies to this. It does. The only reason I could be in a relationship at all is because my horse taught me to not mother, martyr, micromanage and not uh, try to force something. Relationships always have to be 50-50. And the more I try to fix his hair or, or, you know, change his, you know, saddle pad, the more he's just like, oh, what are you doing? Right. Mm -hmm. Why are you, you know, and it takes someone, something nonverbal because he can't go like, ah, what are you doing? Then I'm like, why did you talk to me like that? Now we're fighting about fighting. And I think that philosophically it's like, boyfriend, what do you mean? Like, I don't need a boyfriend. I'm perfectly fine on my mm -hmm. own. And then by the virtue of having that position, then you're more attracted, you know, but like, it's, I just don't want to put pressure on anyone. Yes. I learned this from. Uh, working with horses and animals is that pressure is just the worst thing that you can do to yeah. pollute a situation. You know, no one does well under pressure. No one wants to be under pressure. I don't want to meet someone and then be like, is she a wife or not? I'm going to do some very not wife shit every now and then. And I don't want to be um... like what? Well, <laughs> let, let me just say really quickly ahead of the interview, I'm just like giving myself a pat on the back for making the the, the logo for the thumbnail out of horses. Yeah. That made me, I was, by the way, hung over that day. We, I didn't end up finishing this. And then he brought me IVs. 
Oh. Yes, yes. That's I, like illegal. Huh? I, I, if he's think, I, probably, I think so. I think so. Broke a lot of HIPAA laws um, for me. Uh, Some Michael Jackson doctor Majorly. Shit. <laughs> I think he's out. Um, uh, and... And but yes, my horse has taught me um, that you just can't have expectation with someone. You have to let them be free. And that's what we don't do with horses. That's why we break them. We want them to do exactly what we want. But that's not I love you isn't I need you to shape shift in the person that makes me feel comfortable and safe so that I love you. I right. love you as I love you even when I feel abandoned because that's my problem. That's not your problem if I feel abandoned. Mm -hmm. That's I'm 37 years old and as my therapist. So definitely put adults can't be abandoned. They have cars. <laughs> you know, um, if I'm feeling unsafe, that might be my problem. That might not be your problem. So um, but I think that when like boyfriend comes up or whatever, it turns a little bit into like, but you're my boyfriend. You can't act like this. And you're I just property. I guess I know myself and I just don't want to do that the same word with love i'm like let's just not say i love you for a second like because then it's like but you love me how are I'm you so glad i'm on the other side of it though. <laughs> but <laughs> you really fucking i'm deep in the thick of the jungle yeah but somebody before like so like 10 years ago would you want to hear somebody say i love you oh yeah 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 yeah. and then what yeah. even if it so wasn't now, true you're the complete opposite yes i love you was like <clears throat> okay it was this false sense of yeah. security i used to be all about false sense of securities i used to be all about words all about um empty gestures and promises and stuff like that now i'm just like let's not let's just fucking kick it and not force it but is that the complete opposite of it you know what i mean is, is maybe 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 is that as unhealthy as it was the polar on the polar spectrum like it could be i think that it just your intentions are what i'm learning in program are all that matter right yeah. i can drive you to the airport if i truly just want to drive you to the airport no strings attached if i'm driving you to the airport because i feel guilty because i feel bad i don't want you to not be mad at me or like oh he fucking did that one thing this time for me now i'm gonna do this thing and we're just in a codependent mm -hmm. shit show yeah so it's like if my motives really are i just don't want to put pressure on this and i respect you so much and i just want to slowly ease into it so none of my character defects just kind of come out full force like I just I need to go slower as I used to go addictively fast I mean I wrote in my book about mm -hmm. being a love addict where I like was getting in car accidents to like get to someone's house you know I just I know my hippocampus well and I just want to protect everyone from it what's your book it's called I'm fine and other lies <laughs> good nice it's about codependence and addiction and um, eating disorders oh it's a hoot Right. And when did that come out? <laughs> that came out, I want to say, two years ago. Cool. Yeah. It came out the day of the uh, Vegas shooting. Wow. Nice. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I'm the real victim here. here, here <laughs> let, let me let me ask you this. Do you sell them from your own website? Do you have an online store I'm and stuff? Shit. You're such a fucking badass with all this stuff. I don't know. I'm sure. Scott is your guy. Really? Scott's your guy for online. You You're should hired. be doing it yourself. And on top of this. No, I mean, like, don't outsource it. Yeah. Because oh. there's value in doing it in your own ecosystem. Because that Jeff because Bezos is making all the money. When when, no. when you outsource your merch operation, then you got everybody else collecting your fucking emails, all your data, and that's like <gasps> something like that. Do you know how much value there is in an email? So all these companies. And are I mean, you doing whatever. the text app? When, when you oh, I, I just signed up for Good. it, and, I, and I'm going to be on the waiting list, or I'm on the waiting list. Oh, and I'll it's, get you and on it's, it. It's fucking killing me. The, the, I'll get you um, on it. Okay, great. Yeah, the I'm community. an investor. Community. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, here's what I do with the with the books. Uh, I autograph every copy. Oh. And, and so if if you buy my book from my website, it comes personally signed. That's fucking awesome. And uh, that way, it's like a paperback book, but like you know, it's it's worth more. And then I would say for all of you listening, I would uh, harass Steve to do a Zoom with all your fans. Ooh. I did one like mm -hmm. three weeks ago. It was, How do you do it with all of your it fans? It was what fucking you awesome. So you, I had to get some help because um, you can get a, like a whatever hundred dollars for a membership where you can do a thousand people at once Holy shit. on Zoom. And I was there for four hours. So over the four hours, like 6,000 people were able to get in. They would come and they would go. You know, some people stayed for the whole four hours, which was so sweet. Um, but I was able to like talk to, I just like hanging. Like I, I just did a show me your dog or your cat or your pet and like what they're, uh, who would voice them in a movie 
Uh, and I asked like one other question, like what's a special nice. talent you do, you know, just so that we, I could like talk to everybody and then you record it. And then we cut together all these like videos of everybody like showing their dog. It was just like at a time where we can't really connect. It's like a, a virtual meet and greet. Did you that see that? Cool. You see and it's that? cool because they can get a recording of it, of you and them talking. Yeah. You know? Okay. Uh, do they have to pay to be a part nope, of it? No, not Good. at all. You just send the Zoom. If it's 11, you send the Zoom link to either your community or post it on Twitter or wherever like 10 minutes before. Great. Um, let, let me ask you this. There's there's this uh, this company called Architectural Digest, and they've got a YouTube channel, and this is like the new era of MTV Cribs. Yes, yes. And they, like, would you do that? Would yes, I would do it. I'm just getting some stuff changed up. My house is basically just a bunch of horse posters right now, and I'm sure they were just like, no. So I'm redoing some stuff, and then I am going to do it, yes. And cool. so, so do you feel like that invites like weird, creepy fans like showing up at your house? Dude, the weird, creepy fans at my house, number one, I'll say... And if you're not listening, you're not one of my creepy fans anymore, I guess. I lost you. But they're kind of hot and young. <laughs> 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 and, like, quite nice. Like, I haven't had any, you know, I've had some people that are clearly, like, off their meds or see things that aren't there or stuff like that. But, you know, I haven't had. They're very, very. They look, they're hot. They look like Ashton Kutcher and you kind of. <laughs> and a um, baby. Like, I had a couple guys that thought we had been emailing, and I got doxxed, so some people were kind of just showing up, Ooh, like, shit. leaving me bath bombs and shit. Like, I, 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 I haven't had, you know, especially now that I live sort of in the wilderness, I don't think I'm worth trying to figure out, you know, three gates uh, to people, but... <laughs> I feel really lucky. I've had some crazy experiences. I've had people like snap during shows. Kevin Christie once said, and this is, I think, a while back before I w was known really for anything, maybe after my first special when I was preparing for my second special, Kevin Christie, for op who opens for me, whenever we would go down to uh, the comedy store in La Jolla, and whenever he tours with me, it always ends up happening. I don't always know about it because security takes him out, but you'll see it in that small of a venue. And he said, in about like 40 minutes into every show, one man snaps. One man either turns you into his ex-wife or the girl he couldn't get in high school. And he's in the audience? His Always. So, for example, there was a, I was doing this joke. It's so dumb to think about now. But um, I was doing a joke about how every man somewhere in their house or apartment has a jar full of coins. Ooh. <laughs> We've I got do. a five gallon jug. I got a <laughs> five gallon jug too. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, I bet it's got like some random like fortunes in it and like a ring and like a. Candies. That's just when you're too lazy Dude, to I'm, take everything out of your pocket and separate it. Right. Dude, Are, I'm OCD. Like, if, if any other nation's currency cannot be in there, because I, I ultimately have to be able to pour it into the sorter. But and, have uh, you ever? Do you take oh it to God, the I'm coin star? Like, oh, the, the, I do. The, the, the idea of a fucking like Canadian quarter like landing in the jug, which is oh, like God, one that's no. silver and gold. That, no. <laughs> Yeah. That's that's a a dump the whole thing that's out that's and sort through it. That's like a loony, yeah, two near a loony. But uh, <laughs> I, I, like, I ultimately have to be able to dump it into the thing that sorts it and makes it into rolls. Okay. And it can't have any fucking errors. And you do that how often? <laughs> uh, it's Every gonna night. probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably gonna take another like six years to get to that point. I don't know. Every guy's got that job, right? So it always ends up, that joke always kills because it's just one of those observations that just like kind of like everyone gets right away. And there was this guy that I had actually gotten into the show. I used to do this thing where I would like right before the show, say for seats. If you send me an email, I'll give you free seats or whatever. Tell me your story and why you can't get tickets and I'll get you tickets. So this guy writes in. He's like, thank you so much. I'm so grateful. To... There's something that happens, though, I've noticed when you're nice to a fan they come at you like oh my god i'm such a big fan you're probably not even checking this i love you so much and then you respond and then all of a sudden they lose respect for you uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then it turns into hey i'm running late can you save me a parking spot and you're like what how did uh, i go from your hero to your assistant yeah, like, no good deed <laughs> goes unpunished yeah unbelievable like hey where is it again uh -huh. like dude come on right um so a guy that I'd gotten in because he was a vet or some, not the vets I fuck, but a vet, vet, uh, uh, served this country. And um, <laughs> he's in like the third row or something. And he's, I'm, he's dying laughing. He's having the night of his life. He's having so much fun. Everyone's doing great. And I do the same. Why does every guy somewhere in his house or apartment have a jar full of coins? And he just went, that's so we can pay for your shit. Ooh, <laughs> like he just, something snapped in him. 
uh, bringing up money or something or I, You're I just his mother something and so 40 minutes into oh and then we had to remove him and you know that La Jolla comedy store has like one side that's glass and he spent the whole rest of the show staring at me through the glass it, uh, it, you know this is an old story <laughs> it's an old ass story because she's talking about performing in a comedy club yeah <laughs> that's how you know Dating. this was eight years ago I've started booking some dates I mean in for August wow and then here we are we'll heading see. into the second wave. It's crazy. Yeah, I don't know enough about it, but my guess is they'll, I mean, I don't know. Do you think I've got pushed? some dates, uh, like my my next July. date. It's supposed to be July 17th. Wow. I think it's in, in Oklahoma. Yeah, Oklahoma, but I can't well, imagine. a lot of people are going, I, I think yeah. I have a casino in Oklahoma. It's, the, it's a brick town. Brick, brick, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brick Town Comedy Club. Mm -hmm. I talked to Brad Williams. He went out there, had a great time. During I mean, the this pandemic? is. But yeah, like he, he, this was a few weeks ago, and oh. he'd, he'd already been out there. But do the germs just miss him? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm less you, afraid. Brad. I'm less afraid of the comedy club than the fucking airplane to get there. Oklahoma, you could drive. Yeah. You could drive this I know, out. But then the weekend after, uh, Oklahoma is supposed to be Rochester, New York. And that's it when it got sounds... rescheduled. It is was that already in New Rochelle? In the New Rochelle? Yeah. Uh, the Carlson, comedy at the Carlson. And we had this fucking thing sold out Course. like ages ago. And then Course. they just moved it over. So it's ostensibly still sold out. I just feel so weird going back on tour. It's just like... I, a, I know. Like even eating at a restaurant, like, I don't know. Maybe it's like PTSD, but well, I don't... Yeah, I think there's a lot of that residual just... You know, we're all tra emotionally traumatized and and scared. Right. There was like th th this whole quarantine lockdown, and then there was like super quarantine fatigue. People are just fucking over it. And then there was like take to the streets and and like you know let's do the million man march. Yeah. Like wh whatever happened to the pandemic, and then now we're going into the second wave. It's like ah. I mean, it's. I think there's two questions. Not only when can we start back, but when will the rooms be conducive to comedy you know right i had to go through all my jokes i was looking through them the other day and i was like ah oh, fuck like none of this works i don't want to do an hour where i'm like well you know pre-covid oh you know before the invisible murderer came like mm -hmm. i was literally closing on a joke that was about how as a woman when you shake a man's hand they always give feedback on how strong your handshake <laughs> is or something it's like something about, like that's not what the joke's about why are you guys shaking hands like it's like shaking hands is over you know, right. so I now don't know how I even rework the joke to make it happen. Jim Jeffrey special is coming out soon. Uh, he's a good friend, and I hope he's not mad that I divulge this, but he has this whole bit on, like, germaphobes <laughs> and how, like, ridiculous they are. Yeah. <laughs> but he shot it, like, a year ago. <laughs> right. I mean, he, he's going he's gonna to be... Uh... In your seat, yes, in, in, in the van coming up. Awesome. He's Jim is one of my favorite. people. He's the best. He uh, truly. I, I absolutely fucking love him. So it's also like not only that, also I don't want to do shows where I'm only talking about COVID. I think people want to escape sure. this con ubiquitous, you know, news. Um, I don't want to do comedy for people in masks. I just, I, I that's not yeah. fair to them, you know. So, but it's also we're very um, privileged that our parents and grandparents don't live with us you know a lot of people right. go mm -hmm. home to live with their grandparents you know so it's right. like are we contributing to that in any way um you know it's just a it's a it's i feel like a day by day thing i mean i remember when we were canceling uh shows i canceled detroit at four o'clock the show was at 7 30. i mean that's how crazy it was that's how and then i flew to houston and then I, that, they declared a state of emergency had to cancel that night i mean it was just has all been changing by the day and if we go back to that changing by the day thing it's just gonna get so stressful yeah you know it's, it's been nice to get a, a break from comedy but like the original observation that i had where it's like wow this booking guest and the podcast is getting so stressful you know that's one thing about the the grind of being on a comedy tour is that yeah it's a fucking grind it's groundhog's day it's it's no yes. way to live you know in a fucking hotel room on an airplane in a fucking radio station like whatever that whole repeat cycle yeah. mm -hmm. but at least there's no variables that you can't control how i'm sorry i want to go back to this what is the problem with asking people to be on your podcast it's that uh it's it's just that I feel like I want to have like such like impressive like you know high caliber guests where people are gonna think wow I can't believe Steve-O got that person and 
you know. But don't you want them to go, wow, that was an amazing interview? Yes, for also. sure. I want all of it. Yeah. Yeah, I want all yeah. of it. And I think that that's just like, I think I'm just like, uh, it's going to sound douchey to say, but I'm just like, you know, a victim of my own ambition. Yeah. Is what it yeah, is. Yeah, no, I got it in perfectionism. Yeah, like I want to do so well. I strive so hard yeah. to do well and to be impressive. Yeah. And it's just like every week and it's just, I feel like I'm running and there's an avalanche chasing me and it's just like, I've got to like keep getting a guest before like I get buried and, you know. But I also think like, I th I think maybe you forget sometimes, and please tell me if I'm wrong. You're famous. I I and have a, a profile. People to, love you. To like a I I would like to see an episode like of you and your therapist. That's Do you know it. what I mean? You're so um, introspective. You're so surprising. Like you're so clear. Like you know, I, I would like to see you and Lux do an episode. I think I, I think we should. I, I asked know? her to come mm -hmm. today. Oh. I asked I her to come today. So she yeah. said, hey, ask Whitney about how she's welcoming dick pics <laughs> on, on her social media. I refuse to do this like, dick pics traumatize me. They're fucking hilarious. Yeah. And I love them. And I, <laughs> there I should be like a dating app where instead of faces, it's like dicks and pussies. Oh, there's swipe a promo right or for left. this podcast. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> I love dick pics. Who do, why, why are we pretending that dick pics like... Are, like they're fine they are what they right. are also i am obsessed with the backgrounds of dick pics because there's always like a plate of wings there's always like a, a like a cup of noodles TV, like there's, five feet away yes there's also such a there's always such a story in the background that i like to piece together i'm like are those are those christmas sheets like it's we're in june homie so i just love i love to see the inside of people's bathrooms they know this about me i'm kind of a pervert about seeing just like your towels and your irish spring bar of soap like stuck like i just i love that shit. okay what percentage of the dick pics have like a tummy f covered in cum <laughs> like a post load you know dick what pic. i don't get a ton of post load ones i send a lot of them <laughs> yeah you want to go preload to joe you, like, you, you don't need like a shrunken dick after you nut right. but guy, just seeing all the things that i, I i'm big on finding I, I think people are so bullying men right now men are just, like guys have insecurities too seeing guys place their penis the way they put their hand around it to make it look bigger and the shaving <laughs> it breaks my heart i mean it is really just so sweet um wait here's one i mean this one is a look oh there's a come one come nice. on that's a come one wow that's a pretty large penis put yeah you don't even see the beginning put it over <laughs> <laughs> put it over black because he wanted the come to pop Right. Nice. I appreciate your thinking. So forward. they're DMing you and you're screen grabbing it. Yeah, I screen grab them and send them Joe Rogan. <laughs> and so they they know and that Crystalia. you've screen grabbed and they're probably like, oh, fuck. oh, here's some good ones. See, this is this is just like yeah. the shaving, the full shaving. He put a flash on. That's a real mushroom pull. <laughs> <laughs> Got any? It looks like a. Um, a Russian nesting doll. It's very sweet. Let's, uh, let's encourage everybody to not only send you dick pics, but to make sure that they're following you at... That's a good looking guy. I know, that's a job. Uh, I think that's it. Okay. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Probably Paul. You know, your, your Instagram is, is uh, always a great follow. It's just Whitney Cummings. Videos of Steve-O on my YouTube. You're yeah. welcome. We got your YouTube, we got your Instagram, we got your Twitter, your Facebook. You got to say all this. I mean, the liking and subscribe. I just have am you, so bad at promoting myself. I feel Have you done TikTok yet? Yes, I'm on TikTok. Fully. Oh, my God. I've got to do this. What? Look, it's so... Dude, you're fucking designed for TikTok. That's what they that's what, say. Yeah, that's what David dude, Dobrik it said. it was built for you. I know. All right, dude, Paul, we're going to have to start breaking up our uh, our archival content into I'm, TikToks. Yeah, it's, I, put, it. I put some stand-up clips on there. I, I didn't, let's be honest. Someone cut them up, put them on there. It got like 7 million views. Shit. Epic. That How might long be, have you been on there? Uh, Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. I enjoy watching it, too. Oh, look, this is my favorite of all time. It's a guy, and then there's a girl behind him Whoa. holding his dick. Ah. Wow. It's a flex. That's that's nice. Like imagine telling this girl like, no, your head's showing down more. Yeah. Get down more. Just put yeah. your head down a little more. That's a weird position. I hope she's crying behind him. <laughs>
That's so good. Yeah, so I so, have lots of these. So, so you welcome dick pics on all platforms. I just, you know, text me, <laughs> 818-239-7527. Oh. Text the text, dick pic. Text the wow. dick pic. Crop your head out because and, I don't trust myself. And your your uh, your text uh, text number is in your profile, your bio on Instagram. And we're going to get uh, Steve a text uh, soon. It's a great way to text, because here's the thing. Half of our posts in the main feed of Instagram aren't getting in the right in your, I, because of the algorithm. Yeah. I'm, okay, I'm, you get I'm it. You get on, it. I'm sold on the community thing. It's the TikTok that I'm still resisting. But I to. think your your fans need to understand. It's not. Um, we're not trying to mine your data. The reason right. uh, we're doing this is it doesn't take your data. We will know. We're able to then market to you specifically just people in Orlando for the Orlando show. Just people in uh, New Rochelle, New York for you. So yeah. I'm not blasting everybody. I'm sure. not blasting right. Texas with my Florida dates. This is a way to just text you directly cool. uh, to be less annoying, believe it or not. Yeah, no, I'm sold on community. No. And I, uh, I I gotta do this uh, this thing. You have to go, I know. Yeah. I love you, thanks for having me. I'm just trying to find more dicks for you. Yeah, we should come up with a better end than that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Smash the like button. <laughs> <laughs> Follow, <you> subscribe, <laughs> Fo uh, send Venmo. Oh my God, I'm so yeah, pilot. Venmo, yeah. <laughs> Whitney, I'm so grateful for you. I love you so much. I, I'm so sorry it took so long. Um, don't. I was hungover and puking on. Uh, yeah. yeah. I said it was food terrible, poisoning. I lied. Terrible dry cough. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they don't catch. <laughs> I yeah. love you. Thank you. I love you too. Good. How about that, huh? I really think that was a special episode, and I really think that I'm growing as a podcaster. Yeah, feel free to tell me I'm not, and I'll probably see it because I have been checking out comments. And even though when I leave a comment, it says Steve O's Wild Ride Podcast, that comment is totally coming from me. Try not to be mean, though, because it does hurt my feelings um in any case i don't know um thanks again to whitney cummings what do i want to say the street team you guys are the best when we do this trick where everybody takes a screenshot of the podcast and then they put it out on their social media and wherever i see it instagram and twitter are really the only one place that i'm going to see it but whenever i see it i like it and i'm always so grateful and uh not kidding about the whoop strap dude like again Get on, get on over to whoop.com and use the promo code Stevo 15% off. Like, I think it's very, very beneficial. But, uh, yeah, thank you as always. I love you guys.